Hey, it's BuilderDude35, and this week I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple but accurate line following program. So, today I'm going to teach you how to make a quick line following program, and it will literally only take you two minutes to make. Now, this is something you can experiment with your own. I haven't tested this in FLL duty, but I've, I've tested it quite a bit, and it seems to follow the line pretty well. And of course, you're going to need to make some adjustments if you want to make tighter turns, and I'll show you how to do all of that, too, after I walk you step by step on how to build the program. Basically, what you need for this program is a robot with two color sensors on the front, and as you can see in this picture, they're going to have roughly one stud of space in between the sensors, and this is to make it more accurate. This is the perfect amount of space where each sensor is on either side of the black line, and the, um, if you move them farther away, the program will still work but won't be as accurate. And the, how this program works is the robot will drive straight until one of the sensors sees the black line. So basically it's trying to keep the black line in between the two sensors. So for example, if the left sensor sees the black line, then it's going to, it, the robot knows it's going to need to steer itself left because it's going too far to the right. And if the right sensor sees the black line, it knows it's going too far left and it's going to steer right. So now I'm going to go and show you how to build that program. Alright, so with the EV3 software open, and you see I have my notes at the right side of the screen, what we're going to do is drag out a loop block, and then inside that we're going to put a switch block, and then in the bottom, or no case of the switch block, we're going to put yet another switch block. In this primary switch block, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to color sensor, compare, reflected light intensity, and we're going to set that to port 1. It all depends on what sensors you're using, but I'm using sensors in 1 and 2. And then in the second loop, uh, switch, we're going to set it to the same exact thing. And we're going to set this one to port 2, though. And so now for our value, we're going to set it to less than or equal to 10. That's the light value I measured on the black line. You're going to do this for both of them. Now the 10 is going to be what you measure. That's just what I measured with my robot. You're going to measure that in port view. So in the top here, we're going to drag out a move tank motor block. You're going to set it to on. And we need to make our robot turn, so we're going to make one side go faster than the other side. So I have 35% power on my left wheel and 45% on my right wheel. And that's going to make my robot turn left when it sees the black line with the left sensor. And we're going to do the same thing with this other switch case, except we're going to do it opposite, because now we want it to turn the opposite direction if the opposite sensor sees the black line. And now our last thing that we're going to do in the very bottom here is turn, uh, again, turn the motor blocks on, but we're going to have power on both wheels be the same, because we're driving straight. Uh, now this is our completed program. So, now let's test our handiwork on this makeshift line that I've made. As you can see, the robot is essentially driving straight and making corrections whenever it's straying from the line. Because the robot's objective is to keep this black line in between the two sensors at all times. And what it's doing is it makes small corrections because there's only a small difference in power between the two wheels. 35% versus 45%. And you see as soon as it starts to deviate from the line, it's going to make a correction to put itself back on. So now what we're going to do is try something more difficult and try to drive on a line that's not straight. What we're going to do is we're going to alter our program. The slower of the two wheels, instead of rotating at 35% power, is going to rotate in 20% power. Increasing the difference in power between these two wheels allows the robot to make more extreme corrections when it needs to, so it turns more when it needs to correct its line, and this allows it to stick to a tougher line, in this case this 90 degree arc, much better than if it had smoother corrections optimized for straight lines. So now we're going to try something even more difficult than that, what I call the intense squiggly. What we're going to do to our program now is we're again going to decrease the power of the slower wheel now down to 10%, but also decrease the power of the faster wheel from 45 to 30%. And when it's going straight, when the two powers are the same, that's also going to go from 45 to 30%.
So what we're doing is not only increasing the difference in power between the two wheels so it can make sharper turns, but we're also slowing the robot down so it can make more precise movements. And always remember that when we're, your robot's moving slower, it can make more precise movements because you take some of the inertia of the robot out of play. So now you know what kind of effect changing the power of the motors on your robot has on the program. You can now adjust your program to suit the needs of whatever line you're following in whatever situation. By the way, this was a fan-suggested tutorial. If you have an idea for a tutorial, go right ahead and submit it, and it could become an official BuilderDude35 tutorial. Anyway, thanks for stopping by this week. If you haven't done so already, go check out my website. I'll put a link up here. And I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.